So the first thing I did was I went home and I grabbed the Bible and I opened from page one. And you have to understand, going to a Catholic primary school, they only show you certain verses of the Bible because the Bible is not a very light book. So they'd say, you know, read only this page and that page. So when I started to read it for myself, it was quite a big shock. Anyone who's read through the Bible, and I'm sure Dr. Zakir Naik has mentioned many such things, as is Ahmad Idat, rahimahullah. Some of the stories in the Bible from the very beginning, they are very lewd. They are almost pornographic, if you like. So as a young kid reading these verses, I thought, hold on, this is the word of God? This is amazing. Like you hear the story of Lut alayhi salam, and Lut alayhi salam, or Lot as they call him in the Bible, he is innocent of such claims. They mentioned that his daughters withdrew from him, from the society, and they lived up in the mountains. And it mentions because they had such urges, they got their father drunk, and they commit zina with him. A'udhu billah. So you can understand, coming across these verses, this is something I've never heard before. This is a side of religion which I never thought existed. But the main shock was when I was going through a book of the Bible which is called the Book of Deuteronomy. And the Book of Deuteronomy is basically a set of laws which was given to Musa alayhi salam, to Moses. Some of these laws were as follows. I would see that God was saying to the people, you should grow your beards. You should not shave. And I thought that's very strange because if you see the Pope, if you see our local priest, if you see basically any Catholic on the face of the earth, they're always clean shaven. Now, what's this thing about growing a beard? Then it was saying that you should not become drunk. You should not you know, drink alcohol. I'm thinking, but hold on, when we go to our church every Sunday, the priest actually gives us wine to drink. And it also said that you should not eat pork. You should not eat from a pig. And I thought, Ajib, this is, this is really amazing because, again, every Christian I know, it's like the most Christian thing you can do. Sit down and eat pork. They love it, especially Italians. It's like a staple meal. So I thought, where did this come from? How could it be that God is saying something, yet we're doing something different? And in the back of my mind, I always remembered, you know, like I knew Jews didn't eat pork. And I had some Muslim friends growing up. And basically their religion to me was the fact that they didn't eat pork. That was the one thing which really, you know, made them uh, describe them, that they didn't eat pork. So I thought, oh, they're not doing it. And our Bible's telling us not to do it. So I'm going to stop doing it. That's it. None of that God has told us this, so I will stop doing it. So as soon as I started doing these things, and I also tried to grow my beards, you know, I could never grow up too much. It would always get to annoy me a little bit. But alhamdulillah, as you can see, now it's growing. At that time, you know, I started to do this. And all of my uh, family, some of who claimed to be, you know, religious practicing Christians, they said to me, why are you growing your beard? Why won't you eat pork? Why won't you drink alcohol? And I'd say, well, the Bible says so. And they say to me, well, no, no, that's in the Old Testament. We follow the New Testament. I'd say, how is it that you can reject part of what God says? and only accept some. Like I'd say to them, do you accept homosexuality? And they'd say, no, of course not. I said, well, that's in the Old Testament. What do you say to that? And they wouldn't know what to say. And I'd say, you're hypocrites. All of you are all hypocrites. You're only taking from what is easy for you. And Alhamdulillah, that's one thing which later on impressed me about the Muslims. They wouldn't pick and take. Even if they drank alcohol, for example, they wouldn't say that it was halal. They would say, Allah said it haram, and may Allah make it easy for me to stay away from such a thing. So that was one thing, alhamdulillah, which was good about the Muslims. So uh, around that time, in uh, the year 2000, I actually visited the Vatican. Now, the Vatican is a place in Italy, in Rome, and this is the seat of Roman Catholicism. Now, once I got there, it was the year 2000, the year of the Jubilee, as they called it. And they've got a special door within St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. And this door is called La Porta Santa, or the Holy Door. And they say, when you walk through this door, khalas, all your sins are forgiven. And I thought, wow, just walking through a door, all of our sins are forgiven? Where did this come from? Like, I'd question it. I didn't, I didn't care what the Pope said. I didn't care what they were telling us. I'd say, where in the Bible does this come from? Where did the Pope get this authority? In history, they would constantly contradict themselves. They'd say one thing, then do another thing. How can they claim to be infallible? These are humans. We only follow what God says, which made me a stranger amongst the Christians. But the biggest surprise was actually once I'd got inside of the door. The first thing I was greeted by in the corner was the body of one of the dead popes. And what they had done is they had embalmed this pope so his body would survive throughout the ages and coated it in gold. And what the people were doing was coming up and praying to this dead body. Billah, they were praying to a dead body. And I'm looking at, and I'm thinking, this is supposed to be a place which is the home of my religion, yet I feel so uncomfortable. What are these people doing? How can you be praying to a dead body? Then I'd say there was a statue once you get past that, and people were rubbing the feet of this statue. And they'd say, when you rub the feet, you make a wish. 
I'm thinking, ah, cheap. This is idol worship at the supposed home of my faith. You go on a little bit further and you see, A'udhu Billah, there's a place within the Vatican called the Sistine Chapel. I'm sure many of you would have seen pictures of it. They call it like the pinnacle of Renaissance art. Within there, what it is, is you look up at the roof and there's a massive uh, painting of all of the stages of creation. And the centerpiece of this is a picture of God himself and Adam alayhi salam. Now I studied at least enough to know the Ten Commandments. The second of which is you should not make pictures, you should not make images of your Lord. Yet in the, in the Sistine Chapel within the Vatican we see a picture of God. And all he is is an old man with a long grey beard. Is this who you're worshipping? You're told not to make images of your God. And now you're going and doing such things. Again, this is idol worship. And I felt in my heart that this, it's not right. Even though I've grown up being told this is what I'm supposed to believe, I reject it. So around that same time, I called myself a non-denominational Christian. I was someone who believed in God and you know, I didn't follow any certain church. So I felt really disassociated from all Christians. And it was around this time that I started to read about other religions, not out of interest, you know, uh, that I was searching for something that I needed. I was just interested in reading. So I read about Hinduism, about Buddhism, about this religion, Shintoism, Zoroastrianism. But I never looked into Islam. It was only after some time that I met a Muslim friend of mine, and subhanAllah, look at how much he loved Islam. He said, nice to meet you. My name is so-and-so. Would you like to become Muslim? MashaAllah. How many of us have started a conversation like that? Now, I assume very uh, little of the time someone would actually say, yes, I'd love to. But Alhamdulillah, it opened the doors to da'wah. I knew this guy's a Muslim. If I want to know about Islam, I'll ask a question to him. And so I would. And he'd always be telling me about Islam. And one time I remember he actually gave me a book. It was a very big book. I can't remember what it was. But for all I knew, it was the Qur'an. And 